Well, Team Liquid jumped out with a stunner in Game 1, shutting down Cloud9 and slamming the door in just about 30 minutes. It was a little bit of a longer affair, just about double that time, actually, in Game 2. But Cloud9 able to knot the series with patience and some very solid play coming out of Sing Sing on the Mirana and, of course, Eternal Envy on Luna. This time around, they're going to land themselves a Lycan as we head forward into Game number 3, the deciding game in this series, opening series for Cloud9 at the very least. Liquid already sitting at 0-1 in our standings, does not want to fall to 0 and 2. I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers, joined by Trough for the inside and analysis. We're actually going to get to see a Lycan and an Ember Spirit both make their way through this time. We see Cloud9 banning out the Shadow Shaman and the Centaur. I really love it when teams take this kind of an approach, um, as opposed to just banning out heroes that are strong in the meta at the time. They're just banning out things they know Liquid is especially effective with. Yeah, I mean, game one, that Shadow Shaman... Demon had so much farm on early on and was able to push so fast. And looks like Liquid is taking a page out of EG's book, so to speak, and picking the tree and protector to, against specifically Lycan. Obviously, the overgrowth doesn't do damage, but it's very, very good against the Lycan, um, the ult right there, and keep him in place. And uh, not to mention, it, as we talked about before, if Lycan isn't able to get those fast towers, you know, within 10 minutes and start snowballing towers, tree and protector will keep them all at full HP. So you have to really press the issue or else it becomes very, very difficult trying to push against the tree. So interesting, interesting giraffes coming out here from both sides. Nothing crazy by any means. I mean, we see Ember like in Invoker. We see those in pretty much every game banned out or picked early on. But it was just fun to see the tree in picked here as a response to that like in. Yeah, tree uh, picked in a response to like You pretty much just summed it up. Lycan's extremely good at pushing, but... Um, we saw a couple of times uh, when we saw Lycan in game one, whenever they would commit to a push, get a tower whittled down, and then just come back for it later. They would do a lot of damage, maybe win a small fight, a small skirmish. But the, exactly. tree, the tree makes that not a viable strategy anymore. Because you're going to do that. Maybe you maybe you trade away one hero for a lot of damage on the tower, and you go, well, that's okay because we're going to come back and push because they can't just stand there and defend us three or four the entire game. But then you come back a few minutes later, it's full health again, and you have to deal with that. Um, I actually like the way that Cloud9 banned this out. Uh, again, I, I mentioned it to begin Five with. Banning out heroes that they've just seen Liquid play very effective with. Ancient Apparition, believe it or not, has not been banned out on either side. Reserve and that hero time. is of extremely high value to many teams, including both Cloud9 and Team Liquid. Both have players who uh, excel on the hero, so we'll see if Liquid's going to take him out here. But, um, yeah, it's kind of a, a, re a replay of what we saw in Game 1, just in reverse. Liquid getting the Ember Spirit in Cloud9, picking up two heroes in the Invoker and Lycan, and we'll see if they're going to continue to to add to it, the two heroes that can just push like hell and try to keep that Ember Spirit down through nothing but constant pressure and forcing him to show up the fight whenever he's not prepared. Yeah, now the question is, do Liquid do something about it in the laning phase if they try to go aggro with some sort of tree and try lane? They have Vengeful Spirit, which is going to add some more damage to an already hitting for 90 um, just beast of a tree protector. So, yeah, the question is, yeah, if, if they already go aggro try lane, Dazzle is a good hero against that because it just picked it up for C9 yeah. to keep the Lycan alive and stuff like that. Not to mention, it is kind of a cool little trick that you, well, not really a trick, it's pretty well known, but the fact that you can healing wave the um, like, Lycan wolves when oh. they stack up against someone and does a lot of damage that way. So, oh, yeah. yeah I, I actually like both drafts right now, so we'll uh, have to see who throws the curveball here and, and who throws the other team off. I really love uh, the Dazzle pickup here for every reason you just named. He's also a very... He, he makes it very difficult for an enemy team who's defending their tower to go, okay, we, we've seconds. stopped your momentum, now we're going to try to jump you as you try to retreat from our tower. It's tough to do that when there's a very high probability that Dazzle's going to be just sitting in position ready for when that happens to throw out a weave that catches both friendly and enemy heroes. And that can just completely change the way a fight feels, especially when you see the majority of the push strategies really relying on success. When you're talking between the 10 and the 20 minute mark, etc., that's when weave can really just feel so overwhelmingly powerful, though it does uh, scale very well into the late game. We are going to have minus armor on both sides, though, with the Vengeful Spirit out on Team Liquid. And Team Liquid... Uh, did opt for the dire side uh, this time. We did our coin flip, and it was ended up being Cloud9 selecting first pick while Liquid uh, chose the dire. So we'll see how much that's going to play into things. But I feel like this is a very even draft so far. Yeah, I think so too. And, uh, I don't know. I give a little bit of an edge to <laughs> to Liquid just because I think Ember is just that much better. Yeah, in my opinion, if you were like, I don't know, if you were taking like the second best hero in Dota, whatever that is, maybe it's like him. And if you had to put Ember against that, I would say that Ember is still like twice as good as that hero. <laughs> I, just, I feel like Ember is just very, very strong. Now, Luna 
the same kind of thing we saw with C9, Double Aura's coming out. And yeah, I I still, I wonder if they're going to go aggro with this. It could be very, very effective. Yeah, it's... I think it's a very high possibility, um, and it all comes down to how they want to uh, how they want to end up doing this. You know, just based on the Luna pickup, you would imagine it's going to be an Ember Spirit mid, and just keeping the Ember safe and allowing him to try and thrive and flourish in that mid lane, especially against a ranged hero, or excuse me, a melee hero like a Lycan, as strong as he can feel. The Wolves, as you pointed out in game one, can make life living hell for supports. But whenever you have to try to come forward into a Luna, into a tree, into that double aura of the Venge and the Luna. Uh, in particular, and you have to worry about Leech Seed, you have to worry about Magic Missile Stun, you have to worry about just eating a lot of Lucent Beams if you do that. It can make things a little confounding, makes it very hard to last hit effectively, and, you know, it's kind of up in the air. I, I actually feel like Liquid in this third game, given just where they are as a team, you know, a team still really trying to find um, some some personal momentum, not momentum in the sense that we talk about it within a game where you win a few fights and, yeah, you start to kind of take control of the map, but just... You know, fitting Demon into the lineup, we, they have looked so much better. We saw them execute very, very well uh, throughout these first two games, even though they did lose game two. Um, I feel like a win here would be just gigantic for them, and I think they need to just roll the dice and say, screw it, we're going to put the pedal to the metal, and we want to try to take control of the game early and be the pace setters, not the guys reacting. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Rubik's picked up here for Cloud9. I'm wondering, where's the lion love, man? Especially against an Ember Spirit. I, I love Lion as a hero. I think it's really strong. Has burst, has crowd control. Or at least for, you know, one hero anyway. And Or you can get multiple stuns. But, yeah, Rubik is the, uh, is the hero of choice. I would have liked to see the Lion, but it's still not bad for the lift initiation on Ember. But, um, I don't know. I'm still leaning a little bit on, on Liquid's lineup. I, I like it more. At least right now, they have the dire advantage as far as Roshan is concerned, as you mentioned. Um, Embers just got... Oh, what I was going to mention was Venge. I actually really like Venge against Lycan, too, because if Venge is able to get uh, level 11 especially, the swap is actually quite good against Lycan, because you know he obviously runs away, but if he gets swapped, stunned, it actually buys a lot of time for your team to burst him down. Yep. So I, I like the Venge pickup here. Yep, and swap of course goes through BKB. So you know you can use it in a variety of fashions. Timber saw going to be the last pickup for Liquid as even more AOE. I don't know the push is really an option. Um, pushing into this much um, when you're Team Liquid, like or when you're uh, Cloud Nine, you have to deal with Timber Saw's Chakram. You have to deal with his ability to just output and and pursue you a lot. And it comes down to what we were talking about before. You're all or nothing whenever you have a tree and protector on the map. If you want to try to push towers very early. And uh, retreating, the Dazzle helps out with that. It's very hard to, to chase down a uh, retreating team whenever you know Weave is going to be waiting on you. But now you have a Timbersaw who excels in that role. Who um, uh, Obviously, the minus armor sucks, but Timbersaw with reactive armor doesn't care as much as another big kind of brawler-type hero uh, really yeah. would. And he's just that perfect get-in-your-face hero to make room and space for the Ember Spirit and Luna to do damage from the periphery. And I still wouldn't put it past Liquid at this point to do some kind of aggro try with Timber. I mean, you know, you could have hide the two supports. They think it's a timber saw, offlane solo, and then you catch off Rubik and Dazzle level one. It's a very, very easy kill. So I, I would really like to see them do kind of something creative like that. It could still just be fine to do something standard with timber saw offlane, like you mentioned, and that's all fine and dandy. But I, I think addressing Lycan in, in, the, in the laning phase is the best way to do it. Oh, Doom picked up. Love so. that pick. Yeah. It's uh, going to do a lot against pretty much, I mean, there, there are two heroes in particular it's going to be the most effective on. It's going to be Koikva and the Timber saw if they're able to get it off on the Timber. Obviously, Timber, for the most part, relies on his abilities. He's not a, a right-click damage hero. He just, he isn't and he never really will be. He's all about control. And if you take his abilities out of the mix, that uh, shuts that down. But, of course, the Ember Spirit as well. Um, being able to doom the Ember Spirit can really be problematic, though we did see... A couple of times uh, when we saw Na'Vi play Team Liquid that it didn't matter as much as you would think it would just so long as you adequately manage uh, your fights and so long as there's communication. So it's going to be a test of the communication that we've both kind of noticed has improved immensely um, on Team Liquid. I do like their draft a lot, but Cloud9 has a punishing lineup, has a lineup um, that if you get behind can really put the screws to you. Yeah, and, and a little bit of role reversal, at least for this game with Looks like Bulba is going to be taking the Ember Spirit in for mid for Team Liquid. Not 100% sure what lanes are going to be as we haven't seen them yet, but that's most likely. As uh, Yeah, it could be interesting. It does look like Liquid's going to go five-man here Careful. bottom as the GLHFs come out. And uh, I, I still would like to see some kind of, kind of aggression because, as I was saying, uh, 
as far as stopping like him early on, I think is obviously one of the best ways to to stunt him as a hero. And you know, he, he, he his landing phase is is not the best. It's, it's no mistake. So I would love to see Liquid do something aggressive here. Well, they're moving towards the same piece of real estate that C9 seems to covet. Moving into their own jungle, wanting to keep things safe. Bone doing a little dance with the Doom just to entertain us while we wait to see if Liquid's going to end up finding someone. And we're going to see Lycan. He actually eats the tree down. They should have seen that. They did. And it's pinged out as TC and Quakeva were the ones spotted. And the rest of Cloud9 immediately retreats backwards. And Liquid not going to be able to make much happen here. Yeah. Looks like the lane's just going to take shape in the meantime. Yeah, and I think even more reason to do it is if it is an offlane Doom, which it looks like it's going to be, if they decided to have Luna just solo up there, or even if they have decided to have the uh, Timber Saw solo up there, it would just be so... Yeah, it does look like it's going to be an aggro Charlie. I really like this from Liquid. Yep. And Timber Saw, of course, with the, uh, the the Whirling Death is very good against Strength Heroes as well. And um, I mean, Bone 7 still going to be able to get CS with the uh, Devour and whatnot, but I, I really like this from... I think this is the right decision from Liquid. Yeah, I think we, we talked about it for a while. And, you know, again, they just have the advantage down here. Uh, being able to bully around the Lycan a, a bit early with the ranged heroes with the double aura. And engaging into a tree is always such a risky proposition. I mean, it, you everyone knows and jokes about how much how high his base damage is. But you get hit with a leech seed and he auto-attacks you twice, suddenly that's a quarter of your health gone, man. Like, it's it's not something you can just play around with. And, He's a beast. Yeah. And mid, we can see Bulba getting a lot of attention as AUI on the Dazzle is hooked up here and is just uh, standing next to Sing Sing to try and make this a very difficult lane. Yeah, if Bulba's able to get the experience, though, I don't know how effective this is going to be. Uh, Invoker desperately needs experience more than most heroes, so he's going to have to rely on a, a Midas if if uh, Owie plans on staying here for quite some time. As we see some rotation, some counter-rotation coming out from Demon as he's tacked up Mercenary Demon. <laughs> I'd say that's about right. Uh, up at top, we can see this is going to be one of those lanes where a kill could very easily happen because they're just going to be in each other's face the entire time. And we'll just have to constantly be vigilant to uh, have one of us looking at that spot all the time. AUI is going to go ahead and rotate top, so it is going to end up putting some more pressure on the Koikva. Down at bottom, we can see Lycan getting some last hits under his own tower. And Liquids should be realizing pretty damn soon this Lycan should be easy to bully around. We can already see how aggressive they're being with their wards. They have two down in that jungle. And yeah, they're going to go right for it. There's a Lucid Beam and the Leech Seed. The Wolves are out trying to buy some time. Banking on no rotation coming out this early. He actually walked right past Waitsu. TC's oh, going to have no another Lucid Beam. And TC's still there. He doesn't have enough mana for the Lucid Beam. He's not going to have enough for... No, he's not going to have enough, period. And Waitsu, oh, getting blocked off by the Wolves. And we're going to see him fall back safely. In the meantime, we can see Bone 7... Farming very comfortably right under Koikva's tower, not caring too much about that. And in mid, Sing Sing and Bulba continue to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They have rotated another support back down to bottom, though, as they realize if they had had one extra stun, that would have been a kill for sure. And Demon is going to be spotted. He runs right into Pylai Die. Yep, he should have known. Oh, and AUI actually gets the first blood in the meantime here in mid. So action absolutely everywhere on the map. And Pylai Die lifting and making things a bit of a pain for Demon. But in the meantime, first blood tallied there in mid. Yeah, I, I, that's really unfortunate. I think he ate one tree down there, and it happened to be the one spot that uh, Way Too Sexy was not trying to block. Couldn't get the block off on him, even though he is quite slow and clunky. But yeah, oh, another kill on the Bulba, yep. right back to back. He just TP's back. 2 0 here for Sing Sing. Actually, you know, it was Owie oh, yeah, I got the first blood, so mm -hmm. not a good start at all. You know, I mentioned it's not going to be too good if Owie stays around here. Um, because he's going to get more experience up on the Ember than, than Sing Sing playing the Evoker. But if you're getting kills, man, it definitely pays off. So level 5 on Sing Sing, and Bulba's level 3. He just yep. hit level 3. Bulba hurting quite a lot, and we can see some more rotations up the top. AUI ready to put some of his early levels to work. Koikva, a tough target. We're going to see the Shadow Wave used, and a little bit of right click. Looks like he and Boon 7 want to put some pressure on. In the meantime, we've still got 3 down in bottom trying to lock down Eternal Envy's like, and he's just short of level 3 right now. Koikva, in the meantime, is going to be able to soak experience, having a little bit of trouble getting up front to try and get some CS. But like you said, here in mid, it is a gigantic win for Sing Sing at 17 CS to Bulba's grand total of 3 oh on top of being that far behind. Another pseudo-dive here. This mercenary man himself runs out the stun. There's the lead seed. 
Do they have the follow up? Do you see he does have boots, but he's quite far away. Yep. I don't know. Oh, they have another stun in one second. Yeah, they can't get this kill. They just keep pursuing. They keep. Oh, oh no! A little. Oh, and then he ran back. There we Poison go. Poison Levy is going to die. So a little bit of a little kind of sketchy play there, but good, good communication right there in, in pursuing the issue and getting the kill. And a smoke right in front of the creeps, by the way. Yep, just wanting to move back through mid. And Demon is absolutely act like a mercenary. He is just everywhere at once and making things happen, or at least attempting to. Where he can, it's a two to one win, uh, two to one lead for C9, but they do end up losing their bottom tier one at the same time. Koikva's coming up on level six now. Bone Seven is right there with him. Uh, they're just about tied in overall experience. So take a look at the graphs at five minutes in. We're basically dead even on gold. The experience though is slightly favoring Cloud Nine. Yeah, I think the big thing too is that Doom is getting so much out of this top lane. I know we got a tiny little bit of help from a small rotation from Owie early on, but he is pretty much doing way better than he should. Oh, action here on the ball, but yet again, yep. this could be his third death, and it's going to be second kill minute here for Sing Sing. So Bulba, oh man, he hasn't even got a new, another C, uh, new CS yep. since you mentioned that he's still sitting at three. So, oh, rough start here for Bulba. This is exactly how you hold down an Ember Spirit. I mean, we made much ado about, you know, the push strat we saw be so effective in game one and how it held him off a of farm. Or you can just say the hell with it. We don't have to push. We're just going to kill you a hundred times because you're going to be too far forward in mid trying to last hit with a melee hero. And they've done a, a great job of uh, really making life hard on him. And up at top, I mean, Koikva is going to, if Liquid wants to really have a chance to get back into this, they're going to, you know, you hate to say, yep, uh, Doom on to Koikva. It's going to say Koikva needs to stay alive and farm, but TP's going to come in to help him out. That'll be Demon showing up. Koikva still with half time on the Doom. Uh, I think he's going to end up being okay. Yeah, he will. And he yeah, has and more help from way too, so. And he has a health pot. He'll pop that up and, and be just fine. So, unfortunately, couldn't hit a kill with the Doom, but did rotate some people up there. And yeah, Bulba, some more aggression. Up to six CS now, so he's he doubled his CS. <laughs> Doubling his CS in the last 30 seconds, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad, but still so much aggression. This is not where you want to be with the uh, most broken hero in the game right now. Yeah, I mean, it's we're seeing, once again, just another way to deal with him. Just it, When you run in mid, this can happen. Um, anytime you run any kind of squishy melee hero mid that doesn't have a dedicated escape until level six, um, he is getting it's, close, though. It's the great rotations. I mean, yep. You know, I mentioned I would have liked to see a lion, but Rubik is actually better early on for smoking, uh, for the lift, um, because you don't need the burst so much early on, you just need the control. So, yeah, really good rotations for specifically Pile I Die. And up at top, keeping an eye on things there. As it looks like, yeah, I thought they were going to try to maybe make something happen there with Bone 7. His Doom still on cooldown, though, so opting not to do so. TC continuing to try to farm up on the Luna. And we're going to see that Invis used, plus the immediate bottle charge. He's going to have Doom up in 10 seconds, and he's going to spot Bulba. And this is, could be, up. Oh, Bulba should know he's being pursued now. Just a little bit of the glitch in his walk animation. Nope, he's going to turn around and go right into the jungle. So hard to make that determination half the time. Sunstrike is there, and the Doom. And now burning him down and chopping him down. Very well played and very well executed out of Cloud9. And... Whenever you have an Ember Spirit that is falling this immensely far behind this early, you are getting into some very, very risky territory. You are because he's not going to have anything to offer in the mid game yep. at this point. He's not going to have drums. He's not going to have HP. He won't be able to defend towers once the Lycan actually gets up to some levels, which he's almost level five. So he's going to have invis on those walls. And yeah, I, it's, it's really unfortunate. It's not entirely Bulba's fault, really. It's just that the hero does have he does have one weakness, and that's his susceptibility to ganks early on before he hits level 6 and he is not level 6 he's level 5 and in fact Invoker's level 8 he's 3 levels higher now than his counterpart in mid Lycan has dipped into the jungle now he's still short of level 6 he may be spotted out by our Merc and Mr. Bulba Bulba needs this he needs it badly Demon still just level 2 he needs it too just for the experience there's a stun do they have the damage oh no not, not a good it job on the searing rock. chains Yep, no Searing Chains procced on him, and they know they have to bail. They knew someone was going to be on the way. So a little bit of RNG devil for, uh, for poor Bulba and Demon. He could have, he could have possibly waited until, uh, until E ran away. Of course, that's buying more time for supports or whoever to come. So 
it's kind of an iffy call, but just, yeah, things just going so not in his favor for Bulba this game. Seven CS. He hasn't even got one CS a minute mm -hmm. of a rate right now. They got to do something with him because, I mean, one of the reasons pushing into him early is so effective is because it forces him off a of farm and slows his item progression. As of right now, there is no progression. He is item stagnant, and way too may end up dead here as Sing Sing is right behind him. Does manage to get off the living armor in the meantime. The Forge Spirit still chasing him down, but oh, Sunstrike predicted the wrong spot. If he'd have just shot it, assuming he would stop, he uh, would have gotten the kill nonetheless. He's able to make it away, and Demon now the lone bit of defense here in this mid-tower. Bulba has gone top. He's trying to challenge Bone 7, but Bone 7's almost level 9. Bulba's still short of his level 6 at almost 10 minutes in. Yeah, and, and C9's actually doing a really good job about eva evading ganks. Um, but it was EE in that one spot right there. Rubik actually uh, evaded another gank coming up into his jungle right now. He might know that there's an aggressive ward here placed in that magic bush uh, because he saw people coming over there. So that might get dewarded. But yep, yeah, C9's, I, they're just communicating really well this game, playing much more safe than normal and it's really paying dividends and they've already shut down Bulba in mid so yeah it's going to be really hard for Bulba to kind of contribute in these fights I feel all of Liquid dedicated to the defense they know they can't start losing towers yet the one good thing that has gone their way is they've done a fairly good job of holding down Eternal Envy he's uh, sitting right in the middle of the pack actually the bottom of the Actual farming heroes, I should say. Well, <laughs> never mind. I forget that Bulba actually was trying to farm and uh, still got nine. And that's not a flame to Bulba. Sam knows. Sam knows that kid. But, uh, yeah, other than him, he's sitting at 32, and he's quite a far behind everyone else. So they have a little bit of time now to play catch-up. But if they start losing towers and map control, there will come a point where the Lycan does catch up, does get his items up, and does just start to crush towers. And they're going to be fighting four on five until Bulba is able to uh, get something going for himself. So... As of right now, they just can't afford to be caught out and lose any more ground than they already have. Pylite Die is going to end up being spotted out. And the Lucid Beam is actually, yep, finally caught him. Demon right there. Can he get the Magic Missile off? Nope, going to change his mind as he knew uh, after the Shadow Wave it was going to be three on two if they charged out without Bulba. That was actually really good because it could have been really bad for C9. They had a good idea. They got their smoke broke and uh, couldn't get off the successful gank, but that could have been a very easy double kill there for Luna who had the ultimate up. So kind of a little stalemate right there, but I think a small victory for C9, even though they had to waste their smoke. Koikva farming right in the face of the Lycan. Lycan can't really come forward. His level 6 has his ult if he has to. It looks like they're going to end up spotting Bone 7. Immediate magic missile. He gets the Doom off on TC in the meantime. Poison Touch slows him down, and they're right there with him with the Scorched Earth. Cold Snap not helping matters, and that's going to be a big kill. And now here's where things get really scary. If they end up start, if they end up giving up kills now on TC, hang on, Pilai Die could be a a casualty of Bulba's able to catch him. And yeah, I don't know why he tried the TP there. He had the no searing chains was ready to go. It's such a short cooldown. But nonetheless, a return kill on the Rubik is nice, but they absolutely cannot uh, end up giving up deaths on, on TC. They cannot do it or this game's going to get away from them quickly. Yeah, absolutely. He's like really their saving grace right now. And I mean, big props to Liquid early on for pushing that tower. I was going to say actually that in the beginning stages of that trial, and they weren't getting enough done. You know, they missed that kill on EE early on. They didn't have enough aggression on the tower, but they they, they changed that. They brought down uh, Demon, who was he moved mid to help out Bulba, but to no avail. I mean, Bulba was already too far behind at that point, so they moved him back down. They had the the tower killed relatively easily, but yeah, with with kills up on the liquid, or sorry, on the TC, it's going to kind of negate all that. So yeah, I agree. They need to protect. Um, they need to protect TC as much as Bulba at this point. Bulba's slowly recovering, but very, very slowly. Keep in mind. C9 going to work on the Tier 1 top. Liquid instead looks like they want to take a Roshan, knowing they can't defend it. This is one of the, the few situations where it'll be all right for them to end up losing uh, a tower this early. He spotted it already. Bam. They don't have the medallion up yet either. They were working on a medallion on Demon, and he doesn't have it up, so this is going to be a little slower than they would have liked, but their hand was forced by the push at top. Here we go. If they end up getting caught out in this, they need to get out of that pit. They have to know. Yep, now they're running. There's a weave tossed out on them. And this may very well end up being C9's rose to take. It's going to be so hard for them to fight with Bulba this far behind. And yeah, if the medallion's done on Demon, maybe they manage to get it down before there's any reaction. Speaking of medallion, Lycan finishes his too. Yeah, and usually I would say like 
for me personally, nine times out of ten, I prefer the Kwasu X Invoker. But yep. it, 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 first of all, it always depends on who's more, you know, what are they more comfortable with. As we have a pause, but what are they more comfortable with? But if you actually look this game against Luna, he went Qua or Exort, which means he has the Forge Spirits. You also have the Wolves coming out from Lycan. So if you have all these minions up in a team fight with Luna, that ult's not going to be nearly as effective as it would. Not to mention, if you could get really extra cheeky and get like a Skeleton King or a Skeleton up on, or um. A skeleton, but a, a dark troll summoner up onto the uh, the doom, summon those skeletons. That's even more minions for the ult to just be useless. So I don't know if he's gonna do that, but it, it could be funny if he did. Shot the sun strike in. Didn't even see where he shot it actually. But liquid doesn't look like they're ready to give up on this. Still lacking that medallion. We're gonna see demon get spotted. It's worth mentioning that Koifa has done fairly well for himself through all of this. He's uh, sitting at 74 CS, he's right there with TC, and he's actually getting very, very close to a Bloodstone now. Still needs the Perseverance, of course, but he already has up the majority of the Soul Booster. Um, once he disassembles his Arcane Boots, anyway. And, yeah, he's gonna have that really quickly. So, looks like C9 gonna play it safe. I'm really impressed with the restraint C9 has shown, because they, they were in position there, they knew that Liquid was gonna be coming out of the Roche Pit banged up a little, and instead of taking a chance and rushing trying to rush down a fight they just pull back and know okay we're pretty far ahead and as we can see at 15 minutes 5,000 advantage for c9 and the experience not huge but they're just in such great shape they they have held down the hero they most needed to hold down in the ember spirit yeah i i think quake was going to break out here in a fight though i really do every single time i see where a team is kind of lacking behind but they have a, a timber shot that's been relatively quiet i see timber saw just blow two people up in an instant yep. and just go ham so we'll see Roshan getting, getting stolen here, perhaps. Here we go. They're going to engage off of it. Immediately, we see the tree and protector die. And Envy's not giving up on the Rosh. Yeah, they're bringing down the tree and He just says to hell with it. I'll take my chances, man. And justified in doing so. And that hurts. That hurts a whole hell of a lot. Because that basically is taking away one of the advantages Liquid has by being on the dire side. Now they're pushed up under their own tier 2. They're still down a man. And we're going to have the immediate blink on top. There's a stomp on the Quake, but they're going to get the stun off. He doesn't have Doom up, though. Doom not active. There's a Chakram going to catch a couple. They do manage to clean one up. Sunstrike's going to be off the mark. Here's the Eclipse doing damage from distance. Was it stolen? Yes, he managed to get it, but he doesn't have enough mana to activate it. Mech's going to get everyone from C9 back up and fighting. And Envy now popping the ulti and trying to pursue them out. And right now, it just feels like C9 is just outlasting them. Just everything they have is just not enough to really bring them down. We can see Quake for continuing to use Chakram to try and stultify this push, and it should be effective enough to force them back. But uh, buying time and not a whole lot else. He didn't even lose the Aegis that time. Not the best ultimate by TC, I gotta say. Um, he used it there, and there were, of course, like minions around, but when you're using it and you have to, like, rush in and be the first one in into Fog, because it's territory that all the C9 heroes were in, were in Fog, and you know it's just not going to be successful, so unfortunately he wasn't able to utilize that ultimate here early on. And despite him having that good start early on and pushing the tower, I feel like his level should actually be a tiny bit higher on Luna as well. But I mean, compare this to, like, for instance, uh, I know he was mid, but he also got a little bit of dual lane action there coming up from Aoi. But Sing Sing's level 11, man. He is going to town. I, I would agree, and I would even go further to say not just a teeny bit higher. Right now, he's the same level as Pylai Dai on Rubik. Like, that's a problem. Um, whenever you were, you know, you were in that situation and you did a decent job of bullying the Lycan around, but now he's caught up. He's in fine shape. And they're going to oh, run right into go. each other in the jungle. There's the immediate overgrowth. We're going to see the Aegis popped off and Sing Sing's next to die. So a very nice smoke from Liquid paying dividends. Lycan's back up off of the Aegis. It looks like they want to just take that, but TC pops the ultimate. He's going to end up perhaps dying here. Nice stomp coming out for Bone 7. Now the Doom on the Quake, but he's dead for sure. And the rest of Liquid has to run. Pylai Dai manages to steal. Living Armor, very nice one to steal. Bone 7 is doing a lot of damage, just chopping away. And yeah, what looked like was going to be a nice catch turns into a complete reversal. As Cloud9 exchanges a, an Aegis plus one for four. And Demon says, totally worth it. As they lose yet another tier one, this is probably going to be a tier two down as well. You know what's one of the most embarrassing things in the world? is when uh, Rubik steals the ultimate and says, hey, I can do it better than you, because that's what happened. Yep. He stole that ultimate earlier from Luna, as we mentioned, and yep. it was actually quite effective. So good plays there from, uh, from Pylai Dai, showing TC what's up. Yep. 
I actually got that confused. I knew TC's was close to being off cooldown. It was a little further away than I thought, so I actually called that as TC's ultimate. My bad, listening audience. So, But like you said, doing a little bit more damage than what we saw TC's do that put it on cooldown originally. So the Tier 1 drops, and they're making a run to Tier 2. Liquid, even though they're back at full strength, I don't know how they come fight. I really don't. I mean, they can... I, the Blink Dagger pickup, by the way, on Bone 7 is such a nice pickup, especially now that he's hanging on to the Stomp from the Centaur. Down it goes. And here in mid, Sing Sing's got eyes on TC, and TC is eating a lot of damage. He has just nine armor. They're going to go ahead and try to collapse now behind this. Demon manages to hit the stun, and the overgrowth is there. Mech's there to get him back up and fighting. Nice grave that's going to keep Sing Sing up and fighting and give him time to retreat. In the meantime, here comes Envy. Demon in trouble, walking through the ice wall, ends up dead behind the fight. Bulba really completely ineffective in all of these fights. Quakefoot does a fair amount of damage, but not enough to actually bring anyone down. And now Bulba doing what he can to try and get a kill, but ends up giving up a triple kill to Eternal Envy in the process. And to tell you the truth, we may be getting into GG territory. I don't know what they could do. Um, the game's been blown wide open. Sub-20 minutes already up towards a 14,000 gold lead. And, yeah, they're going on Tier 3 now. Man, it's it's not often that you hear sometimes that supports carry the game, but I really feel like Aoi oh, in these last sure. fights. Did you see how much healing? I wish we could see healing damage done. Not really damage, but healing done. I, he saved everyone at clutch <laughs> times, too. Yep. He, he also cast the urn right away right after Timbersaw died onto, I, I think it was uh, Invoker Sing Sing and just continued to spam heals, and it was really, really clutch plays by Howie, and I see this time and time again from him, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm never the biggest fan of calling MVPs, but if I had to give one, I would give it to Howie 2000 this game. Yeah, sometimes it really is just a player who was ridiculously valuable, even in comparison to his own teammates. And AUI, I agree, played phenomenal, and you, you look at poor Liquid's lineup, I mean, it all started with the good rotations, good movement onto the Ember Spirit. Finished up at level 10, which wasn't horrendous, but 1 in 5, yeah, you're not going to be able to do a lot, a lot with that. To put it in perspective, by the time all was said and done, um, and I pointed this out before, even with TC, TC finished at level 9, Pile I Die finished at level 10, and he was on the uh, the Rubik, and that's just the kind of game it was for Liquid across the board. Um, talking about the cores, for TC and Bulba, they finish up at a collective 1 in 8, by the time this, this game finished short of 20 minutes. On the other side, though, you have Bone7, who I feel like played really well on Doom. His decision-making was good. He was patient. Loved the Blink Dagger pickup, holding on to the Centaur Stomp. Um, ends up being a great form of initiation, even aside from what they already had. And he finishes up in great shape for 0-3. 5-1 and one on Eternal Envy's Lycan. He was bullied around. He was dove, but just played patient. Didn't die all that much and managed to be right there. And, of course, 2-0-5. I think we can agree the unanimous MVP in AUI. So, in their debut, Cloud9 takes a 2-1 to one victory over Team Liquid. They fall to 0-2 in the D2L Western Challenge standings. And, of course, C9 improving their record to 1-0. and I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers. That voice on the other side of the line, that's Trout Doe. Trout has been fun, as always, my friend. Really entertaining series. Um, Liquid, I, I think, continues to make strides. Even though they lost, um, I think there, there are positives you can take from this end. If Demon especially ends up being a permanent uh, fixture in that Liquid lineup, I feel like, you know, you're getting so close to the international. Speaking of, the tickets, I think, just went on sale. Um, if they oh, haven't yeah. yet, they're about to. Like they're, like, they're going to, like, right now, depending on what time it is. But uh, it's coming up, and it's so close by. It's just a question of can they get into game shape um, Game shape by the time the invites and the qualifiers starting, uh, start. I can only imagine they'll have to qualify their way in, and I think they're going to have a great chance to do so. But uh, would you agree? I mean, I, I feel like I'm feeling some very positive things out of Liquid over the last couple of uh, days and even over the last week. I, yeah, I think they are making positive strides. I think their drafts, in particular, are getting better. Yep. I think their, I think their motivation and morale is also getting better as well, and their games are getting closer. Yep. So it, the, the stats don't lie. Obviously, this game three wasn't very close. Right. Uh, but that was just you know I. Okay, Ember is very good. Don't get me wrong. I right. think this hero is the best in the game, but it's not an auto win hero, and you have to you have to expect some type of aggression like right. that when with smart teams. That if they're going to give you Ember, they're going to have generally they're going to have an idea of how to how to you know stump you at least early on in the fa in the laning phase. So again, yeah, really great play by Aoi. But yeah, to answer your question, I do agree. I think Liquid is on on and up. Yep. And uh, it's been good to see Demon. I, I think Demon's been playing well as a stand-in temporary so oh, far. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, hats off to them. Again, like we talked about it during the cast, it's, uh, I'm not going to rehash everything, 
But uh, Demas Growth is a player in the way he fits in with pretty much any team that he tries to play with now. It bodes well for his future and uh, his professional due to career. In particular, I do believe. Once again, thanks for being a part of the broadcast, guys. As you can see, the chair, well, there is no chair, but the space where Trout would be is empty next to me. He's remoted in from South Korea. And before we go, Trout, make sure you uh, let our fine folks know where they can find more about you, Twitter, Facebook, anything else. Yeah, my Twitter is uh, at Trout Dota. And my Twitch is tw- www.twitch.tv slash Trout. And I promise you guys, I will have a full voice by, uh, nice. by the time we actually have a break. I think tomorrow, so yeah. I'm going to get rested up, chugging that NyQuil, whatever it is, but we'll be back in good shape, I promise. Yeah, I hope so, man. We get busy next week. A lot That's of true. two best of three days. I think we only have, we have tomorrow off, and then we have one more day in the next, like, 14, I think, something like that. So going to be a right. lot of action coming at you here on the D2L Western Challenge. My, uh, myself, I'm Aaron A.C. Chambers. You saw the awesome little plate. Right below me, you can find me on Twitter at AC at A-Y-E-S-E-E on Twitch.tv. It's uh, ACTV, just A-Y-E-S-E-E TV. You can also find me under that name on Facebook and a variety of other places. So uh, if you're interested, make sure you check all of that out. Once again, we are off tomorrow, so we're done uh, for the next 24 hours or so. Going to be a lot of Dota coming your way, though, here again, uh, coming up very, very soon. So make sure you check our full schedule out, and we hope to see you back then. Until then, enjoy your evening and enjoy some Dota.